right, let's go because you know what I came in to do. I don't get paid for overtime. I'm here to fight. Cash, he didn't really believe in his ability enough. You can hear Richard Towers giving him the instructions, you just weren't quite following him. You know, you're in with a big massive fella in front of you, but there was an opportunity there to beat Joe Joyce because Joe was slow as. It's hard to understand how slow he was. Not good to watch. He's a sitting duck for any of the top heavyweights out there. A couple of stone overweight. Coming back from a loss, you would hope that somebody would have the bit between the teeth and want to come back and make a statement. Cash Alley was walking around the ring with his left hand down by his thigh. Eventually, his lack of detail in defense got him caught by that right hook by Joe as Joe started to pull away more from that right hand, which caught him so many times. I don't know why people were shocked Joe got hit frequently. But that's what Joe does. Took him 10 rounds to get it done, but he got it done. The W was the most important thing here. And... At first, I set the threshold for Joe to see some technical improvements, better defense. Didn't get that, but I have to reset the bar for Joe. Resetting the bar for Joe is that he doesn't go on the floor. He doesn't get staggered or wobbled badly by the big shots he takes. You have to set the threshold for Joe differently. He's always going to get hit clean. Success for Joe is if he doesn't get hurt by all the shots he takes. He probably needed the, the nine rounds or so that the fight went. He probably needed it. Will he lose the weight? I think they're figuring that even if he does lose the weight, he's still going to get hit. If he comes in at 18 stone rather than 20, he's still going to get hit anyway. So they're not focusing on, oh, Joe needs to be lighter. Although I would argue that, okay, he's never going to block right hands at any level. English, British, Commonwealth, European, world elite. He's never going to block right hands. But his feet were definitely quicker against Daniel Dubois when he was considerably lighter. Now, the question, is he bulking up because he feels more comfortable? Or can he not be bothered to put the work in? He's got a very ungainly punching motion. Can't punch through the target like... And Anthony Joshua, for example, can't do that. You can see when he's going to throw. And that's why Cash was so confident to keep his left hand that low. Did Cash Alley actually win any rounds? Probably not. It wasn't the worst performance. Like, you know, Cash has been a pro a long time. He fought David Price years back. He's been sparring quality heavyweights. And he's a boxer as opposed to doing any other disciplines. You've got to bear that in mind. The tough dude. He came up short because he was able to land the right hand. Where was the left hook? That's all I was seeing the whole fight. He's found his level. That's what that is. He knew he wasn't brought in there to win. And he fought accordingly. He tried to get off with one bingo winning punch, which was the right hand. And he landed it quite often. So he can't be too disheartened with his performance. Joe said he's still elite. A lot of people won't agree with that. I saw the highlights yesterday and I watched the whole fight today. And this is what they were tweeting in response to... What did Joe look like? And as you can see, they were none too impressed. Joe said he wants to fight the likes of Wilder and Dillian. Well, we'll have to see how Dillian looks tonight, obviously, and what Wilder's plans are. The only thing I would suggest to Joe is to do a lot of them neck exercises and whatever other muscles he can develop to absorb big shots. That's the best advice to give Joe Joyce right now. He's unlikely to improve on defense. Let's just say that. Joe mentioned to me, obviously, he's trying to set up Forbes' fight. Do you think the plan will be for those bigger fights to get back out to Vegas and still link up with Ishmael yeah, Salas? Absolutely, look, Salas, Salas is a great coach, but nothing's out of the question. I think Steve Broughton's a great coach. I think Steve Broughton and Joe get on brilliantly, and I'd like to see that partnership continue. I remember saying that there's normally casualties in a boxer's camp after the year Joe had last year. Two stoppage losses, and as diminutive as... Ismail Salas is. His absence was noticeable. And they've got this Jack Broughton, one of the pioneering fathers of modern day boxing, who came up with the Broughton rules, later known as the London Prize Fighting Rules in the 17th century, before the Queensbury rules. Now, just joking. I've never heard of this Jack Broughton. It's actually Steve Broughton. Joyce's manager called him Jack. Maybe he had an old school flashback. And as I thought, Joe didn't have Salas in his corner because of the reduced purse he would have earned against Cash. 
Although Frank Warren would have a cap on how low he can pay Joyce, seeing that Joe signed a multiple fight deal with him. But he claims they haven't severed ties, so who knows? If one of the big names is next up for Joe, Dillian, Deontay, you could see Salas back, perhaps. I doubt it, though. I doubt it. They've already split before in 2018. Salas is getting on, isn't he? So we'll see. Can't find a full copy of Brad Pools versus Nathan Heaney for the British title. But I do want to say this. I've watched the highlights a few times and yeah, it looks like a very good fight. Paul, he shot me with that up jab and he shot Nathan with it, didn't he? Nathan was getting them combinations off only to find that up jab ramming into his face. And when Pauls had Nathan in trouble in the eighth, the referee is supposed to wait for a convenient time to let the fighter whose gum shield has been dislodged get it washed off and replaced. And they didn't do that there. Nathan was in trouble. He was in trouble. And when Pauls was going to continue his attack, he stopped the action. That's not a convenient space in the round to stop the action to put Nathan's gum shield in. I'm not here to complain about the decision because I haven't seen the whole entire fight. I'm not here to do that. Nathan was obviously disappointed with his performance. It's almost like, you know, after the Bentley performance, he got in the British Premier League and now we're like, maybe he's a championship fighter you know like all talks of Johnny Beck for Nathan at this stage are perhaps muted if Frank Warren and Nathan are disappointed it was scored a draw could always run it back left hook to the body by Sabana backs Maxi to the ropes but Maxi doesn't want to let his back touch the ropes and he mauls Sabana back near the ring and he's also swelling up around the area between his cheek and left eye the injuries are accumulating Punishment is accumulating. The beta, right, left, good combination. Going back to the body again. He was trying to keep his shape, but it's relentless. The body attack. Four huge body shots. I don't know how much more Maxi can take. Oh, Maxi doubling over from the body shots. Literally doubling over. Oh, so he's open to the uppercuts and hooks now. Doubled over like that. Looks like Zabane's going to fold him in half. Oh, that right hook nearly took the air out. Too much pressure. Too much pressure. I think the, the corner could pull him out, you know. I think the referee could stop this, I'll be honest with you. I see Maxi take enough here. Probably took enough now, Max. You know I mean, done your best, but it's not been good enough. You had a good first round. That punch output by Zabeda is violent, isn't it? It's the best in the division. I mean, he, he throws more punches... Then Shakur steams him throwing a whole fight. Oh, I mean, Shakur is more accurate. Yossa, Yossa taking a beating. You gonna pull him out? You gonna let him carry on? I think this is it, people. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. I wasn't expecting it to be that early. He folded. Corner retirement. Wow. Maxi tried to box him off. He tried his best to fight him, but Maxi just doesn't have the power. He doesn't have the power to hold off someone with, with a relentless work rate like that. Just walk through him, man. Towards the end, he was just doubled over for the body shots, man. <laughs> oh, Maxi looks the worst for it, man. Just sitting in that corner. <sighs> Not meant to be, Maxi. That's what it is. Look at the low shots, man. A lot of them are straying. That's a great body shot, though, man. Solar plexus, boy. That must have hurt, man. Hmm. Domination. Whoa, right uppercut by Sabela. Looking at the replays here. Wow. Right hook to the body. End of the fourth round. End of the fourth round, people. According to Maxi Hughes, he flew out to America on the fourth. Had some visa issues. The same visa that he actually used to fight. George Cambosos, he was thinking, well, if he used it last time, it would be okay for the Zabeda fight. But they sent him back. You know, and we're talking an 11 hour flight there and 11 hour back to Heathrow. It's a long convoluted story, which I'm not going to go through because even I don't understand all of it. But he managed to get into America on the 13th. What's that? Three days before the fight. If all is true, which it seems to be, it's not ideal preparation. Not ideal preparation at all. Zabeda fired up, called out Shakur Stevenson after previously... He appeared to be cold on that fight when Shakur called him out. I noticed his fans are getting very excited saying that he'll knock Shakur out 
you know, got to keep some perspective on it. Max, he's a good fighter. Had a good performance against Cambosos. But he's not on the same level as Shakur, is he? On the undercard of Sabeda and Hughes, Floyd Schofield, Golden Boy Prospect, 17-0, 12 KOs against Estero Suero, 13-2, 10 inside the distance. Schofield reminded me a little of a young Sean Porter, not only facially, but the way he leaked in with his left hook and stuff, when Sean was a little more crude. I think he's been, Schofield, been critiqued a little too harshly on his last performance because Suero, however you pronounce it, was ridiculously dirty, you know. Schofield had been cut before, and you can attribute that to the way he leaps in with his punches. And that's what happened here with the head clash. Although Sierra was trying to nut him deliberately as well. And Schofield had him hurt with him leaping left hooks in the first round. And Suero went into extra dirty mode when he realised he couldn't stand and fight with Schofield. You know, they were low blows. The low blows disqualified him in the end. Rabbit punches, WWE hip tosses. I guess you describe them as lifting him, throwing him. I think Schofield did well to keep his cool and stay with it because it's very frustrating fighting someone like that. And he's got a long reach as well, Suero. So when Schofield had his moments of being frustrated, it did look like Suero could get that jab off. But he just a nutcase, a total nutcase. And I hope to see Skull filled in with a more, is orthodox the word I want? Or conventional? Just a boxer who don't foul as much next time out. So I can really judge how he's shaping up so far. Hopefully no promoters put Suero on their cards because he obviously doesn't like fighting within the rules. And he should be penalised for that, in my opinion. So people come to watch boxing, not someone who can't fight. When they realise they're not going to have success, it's just going to foul constantly, constantly, constantly. This was ridiculous. One of the dirtiest fighters I've actually seen in modern times. It's a good fight, man. These people need to stop fucking with me, man, and just let me get on with my career and just get busy, man. Now, you didn't say the British Boxing Board of Control, but when you're saying people need to stop fucking with his career and let him get busy, who else could he be talking about? How did he end up getting licensed by this Texas licensing and whatever not? When most of his fights have been in the UK. So obviously he's got some issues to resolve with the board. Get licensed to fight in the UK. Sky uploaded the third round of the fight. Is he talking to Sky about possibly doing a deal with Ben Shalom? Or perhaps the same arrangement he had with Matram and Eddie Hearn. Free agent fight to fight. What do we think about Hammer? Good body punching from Dylan is the only thing I can really say he did well. He landed some good body shots. He wanted to be aggressive, but Hammer wasn't up for it. He looked like he was enthusiastic to start, hoping he could maybe land something big, but that died out quick. Buddy McGurk was screaming at Dillian, go to the body all throughout the iPhone recording. You know, like I watched it in two parts, the iPhone recording and then Sky uploaded a good copy of the third round where you could really see what Dylan was doing. Landed some hard body shots, lacked a little snap explosiveness. Wasn't in top shape, Dylan looked a little flabby around the waist and stuff, but you know, there's still a lot of gym work to do. Hamadol was out of shape, bad out of shape. Dylan turned up the heat in the third and the body shots took all the ambition out of Hammer and he didn't come out for the fourth. Dylan was very disappointed. He called Hammer a coward to his face. As his arm was being raised. He looked frustrated. You know. I understand Dylan's frustration. What was we expecting from Hammer really? Dylan was definitely training longer. For his comeback fight. Than Hammer has been doing any type of training. Hammer likely took this at very short notice. He needed a paycheck. And was losing more than what he was winning. The last time he had a period of activity. Christian Hammer was just a punch bag. That's all he was. Like. What was Dylan expecting? Like, he was just going to stay around for Dylan to lace him up with big punches. I'm not saying he did the right thing, but what other option did he have? Dylan saying he's a coward. He should have went out on his shield, let Dylan flatline him, knock him out, and put him on his face. But whether he did that or quit in the corner, he gets the same purse. He's a journeyman. He's not trying to assist Dylan to get a highlight real knockout. Dylan did his trademark catch-and-shoot moves. Not with the same effect we've seen 
And um, there was a few times like when he was trying to get up on his toes, semi get up on his toes, his balance didn't look quite right. Inactivity, not in the best shape, wear and tear, too many hard wars. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. It's going to be very tough for Dylan when he takes on the high end of the heavyweights. Very, very tough. He looked better than Joe Joyce though, I feel. He's just got better hand skills than Joe. He tried a big overhand right, but it missed. I'm off to bang the drum on social media to promote Cash Alley versus Christian Hammer at the Copper Box sometime this summer. Josh Taylor has had that treatment in February on his eye and you can see there's um, a little mark around the area. It looks a bit puffy, a little bit puffy because they're saying the treatment hasn't healed as quickly as it should be. But looking at his face, he has aged considerably and there are rumors that he came to the Jack Catterall press conference, probably in Glasgow, drunk. Does he have alcohol issues? Like another former great Scottish fighter, Ken Buchanan, time will tell. The pullouts, the injuries, and I think losing all of them belts he had a few years ago. You add that to any rumours about alcoholism, there's a good chance Josh Taylor is not in a good place. I have to see this fight here with Jack Cattrall before I make any final judgments, which I'm not in a position to do. We could be looking at a fighter who was on the slide. We could be. We could be. This might be his last big event. If he's not careful. The first press conference, and even the second one, I was trying to work it out. I said, where's that, that energy? Now, alcohol can suppress and kill that energy off. But he just doesn't have that energy no more. You know, that O'Hara Davis energy. That Regis Prograce pre-fight energy. But maybe he's strategizing differently. You know what I mean? Like, Save my energy for the fight. This is a good card for my money on Saturday. Steel City, Jim, representing with Grant Smith at the helm. They have fighters like Chantel Cameron, 140-pound ladies, world champion. And the likes of Sonny Edwards, who just lost his strap to Bam Rodriguez not too long ago. And these days, you hear more about the Steel City than the Winkerman. In Sheffield, Grant Smith is the father of Dalton Smith. So... At the Sheffield Arena, Dalton Smith, 27 years of age, 15-0, 11 inside the distance, takes on the 34-year-old veteran, Jose Sabeda, 37-4-0, 28 inside the distance. He's a big puncher. We assume that Dalton will be the fresher out of the two. I'm focusing on scar tissue over the eyes when he knocked out Sam Maxwell last year. And when he outpointed Billy Arrington, head clashes both times had him bleeding out. If he bleeds out Saturday, there could be consequences. He's the British and Commonwealth champion, Dalton. Zabeda has won one in his last three. Outpointed last time out by Richardson Hitchens. Had one win in between losing that fight and being stopped by Regis Progress for the vacant WBC strap, which Devin Haney currently holds after outpointing Progress last year. Dalton Smith is ranked number 12 by the WBC, so he'll be looking to charge up the rankings if victorious on Saturday. You know, this is a dangerous fight. I know a lot of people are going to say he's only won one in his last three, Sabeda, but he's fought top-notch operators. Hitchens is a boxer, and Progress is a quality light welterweight. And I'll be talking about what Devin did to him. This is the top end of 140-pounders. The man's got 28 stoppages in 37 wins. Hitchens himself said he didn't get more aggressive with the guy because he could still feel there was a lot of power in his punches. So he had to do what he had to do and get that shutout points win. Dalton, there's a few things I'm looking at. Is that scar tissue over the eyes? Is he going to bleed out? And can he take a punch at this level? We don't know. And we'll see. The last time Zabeda was in the UK, it was a few years back. He pulled out with an injured shoulder against Terry Flanagan for that WBO title. I believe that was the vacant belt. But he's a veteran who will give it his all. We know that much. I'm tentatively going to pick Dalton Smith to win this on points. Zabeda does have wins over the likes of Baranchik, Jose Pedraza, and ran Jose Ramirez very close to a majority decision for that WBC title. He's not to be played with. Looking forward to that. That's the main event. 
There's another world title fight on there. The WBO 140 pound champion, Terry Harper, 27 years of age, 14, 1 and 2, 6 inside the distance. Takes on the 30 year old Sandy Ram. Six wins, one loss, one draw, two inside the distance. Last time out, looked very unlucky to only get a draw with Jessica McCaskill for all the titles she had at 140. That would be an interesting fight. I'm looking forward to that. Campbell Hatton, he makes a step up. He's 14 and 0, five inside the distance, 23 years of age. He fights for his first belt. He's going to fight for the Southern Area title against James Flint, 26 years of age. 13, 1 and 2, 3 inside the distance. And some people are looking at James Flint to defend his title successfully. That's what some are saying. I've only watched a couple of his fights. And there's another good fight on the card. I'm recommending Ishmael Davis, 28 years of age, 12 and 0, 6 inside the distance. He takes on Troy Williamson, 32 years of age, 20 wins, 2 losses, 1 draw, 14 inside the distance. At 154, this is going to be, or should be, a war. Looking forward to this one. Ishmael, very aggressive, very muscled, a decent pressure fighter. We're going to see what level he's at when he goes against Troy, who likes nothing better than someone standing in front of him trading bombs. This will suit him very much. Looking forward to that fight. Sources have confirmed to me that Keith Thurman has a MRI scheduled today for a potential bicep injury. I'm told the MRI results will determine if the fight is happening or canceled. So there's just over a week before the 30th of March when that fight was scheduled. Now, that fight wasn't warmly received around the boxing world. It wasn't. Thurman, not ranked in the WBO top 15, it was made at a catchweight anyway, so the belt wasn't going to be available. Keith, not flavor of the month at 147, let alone 154. 147 being the weight we're accustomed to seeing him fight, where his world championship days were. I'm not shocked at all at this news, and I'm not discounting that it could be genuine concern about this bicep injury, but I'm still not shocked to hear this news. But perhaps the projection on the pay-per-view numbers have led to drastic action. I don't think Josh Kelly will be ready with just over a week's notice. He's the number one contender for that WBO strap that Tim Zhu has at 154. The Boxing Voice were talking about guys like Charles Conwell, perhaps Brian Mendoza, who who Zhu fought last time out in a good fight, went the distance, but Zhu won soundly. Mendoza has actually been in camp with Zhu recently. I believe Nez was reading what he was reading verbatim of whatever source he got. And they said cancelled, not postponed. Like I said, maybe um, they're expecting this fight not to sell. People have spoke about the scant promotion for this event. And with barely a week to go, there's still no buzz. We're nearly in April and we haven't had one PBC card from this Amazon Prime deal and they're going to have to pick the pace up or what's next what's next with this deal we have to ask the questions Eddie Hearn predicted the pay-per-view sales were going to bomb he did predict that you can say he's hating but he does know the business better than you and I Nez said he made a few phone calls to find out what was happening with this MRI and the bicep injury and the future of the fight and he said people were disappointed that the news got out some were saying it was betrayal sounds pretty serious sounds real people have been questioning where is amazon prime's involvement in the promotion anyone who's got amazon prime you can let me know if they're pulling their weight if they're really concerned about this event they certainly weren't nowhere to be seen in the first presser i saw for the fight the pbc are still promoting the fight and the event even up until a couple of minutes ago and obviously they would because until them results are confirmed they have to and that's why people are so upset that the leak has gone out there 